Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Lena and on today's video, I am super excited to show you this DIY doggy bed frame for Sadie Baby. If you're interested in learning more, please stay tuned. Some of the supplies needed for this project is my usual go-to basic essentials that you see here. You can look at my other videos to get more description on those. You'll need your doggy bed. You'll need some particle wood. I am recycling this old particle wood here along with other scrap pieces of wood. I believe this is cedar shiplap. Over here I have my miter saw and my table saw along with brushes and rags as well as stains and paint. The cushion of the bed will sit on the base which will be made out of the old particle wood here. And that base will sit into this half lap joinery that the shiplap scrap wood already has. And what I need to do is get it cut down to the size that I want, which is this size. And then I'll save this piece for another DIY. Now that I have all of the pieces of wood ripped down to size, I am measuring Sadie's bed right here and it happens to be 24 inches by 18 but I'm gonna cut 25 inch by 19 inches just so that I have extra just in case if I mess up and I'm gonna create a miter saw cut here which will be 45 degrees which essentially makes it a miter joint we'll see how it goes I now have the miter saw set to 45 degrees and it looks like this and you have to be really sure on what side of the wood that you want to cut the 45 degree angle. It's very easy to cut the wrong side and then your cut will be on the wrong end and it won't match to make your basically a box. So I know for sure that I want to cut the 45 degree angle on this side, if that makes sense. I now have all of the 45 degree angles cut into each of the wood pieces and I just brought it up here so that I could begin the sanding process which I'll, I'll start with a 60 grit paper, 80 grit and then jump to a 220 to smooth it off and then I'll stain it. I'm going to precondition the wood pieces first before staining it. I've already cleaned it up with mineral spirits. You stir and pour it into a separate container so it doesn't contaminate your brush doesn't contaminate the main container. Take a clean brush. And just lightly coat it. And what this does, it just helps condition the wood so that your stain goes on evenly and smoothly without any blotcher. As I wait for the wood conditioner to dry, I'm going to use this time to create some pilot holes for these old hinges that will be used to hold the two corners together like so, like that. And if, if these look familiar, I also used these in the DIY coat rack video as well. Okay. Not all the way, just a little bit. This way it prevents the wood from breaking when you drive the screws in. 
and I'll continue this for all of the other sides. And now I'm hopping back to staining and I'm using the same stain called Golden Pecan, which I also use on the DIY Upcycle Coffee Table Makeover. Be sure to check that one out. Put it, pour it into a separate container. Get your brush. And just wipe it on. After this, you'll take a clean rag and wipe off the excess. The excess. <laughs> I'm now going to get the hinges on, so I have to get those screwed on first. here like that but I'm first gonna add some Gorilla Glue just, just for more stability and hold This is where we're at. I got the hinges all onto the corners, but it was super hard for me. I had to ask for help from Dee Dee, and I think it was because of the pilot holes. I did not do the pilot holes accurately, and so it made everything a little wonky, and I was too impatient to wait for the glue to dry on each of the corners, which made everything a little more crazy. And just keeping it real with you all, I do not want to buy any more hardware, so I am adding an extra layer of glue to all of the corners and letting it sit overnight. And we'll see how it goes. I will go ahead and use this time to cut down the particle board here so that it can sit flush against the half lap down there. These are the times when a measuring tape comes in super handy. I cut down this one and it, fit, it seemed to fit okay, but with these two I had to get rid of these odd inside pieces of the compressed board, a lot of pieces that had um, nails in it. And once I did that I just assumed that it will fit like the other one, but in reality it did not. It's a little short. Thankfully, my stockpile of wood over there and other compressed boards, I found these two pieces and I will start all over again. Got out the measuring tape and I'm doing things properly. I cut down the boards and this is the moment of truth to see if it, if it fits. Let's see how it looks with the bed on top. And we'll ask Sadie if she likes it. Sadie, what do you think, baby? Oh my goodness, you're so beautiful. You like it? You like your bed? Yes? <laughs> I almost forgot to show you all how the glue dried up after after a couple days. This is how it looks in each of the corners. And when I pick it up, it is sturdy enough to move around. And the outside hinges are intact still. And they act like a decorative piece, so 
it works for me. Here is the before shot of Sadie's bed area. Her little doggy stand back there. You know, she's just hanging out. It's comfortable, but we just wanted to elevate the look a little bit. And here is the after shot of the doggy bed. What do you think? Added another rug for a layered look and some succulents for decor. I think she likes it and comfortable. And there you have it everyone, the DIY doggy bed that I made for Sadie Baby here. I hope she likes it. She's been hanging out with me all day filming this video. Um, some things that I do want to mention, I use things that I have on hand at the house, like the wood glue, the hinges, these old scrap woods, and the compressed boards. But by all means, you could definitely go to the store and buy the supplies that you need to make your own doggy bed. So... Me and Sadie are tired now, and I hope you stay tuned for the next DIY coming at ya.